parliamentary democracy that are, you have the liberal NDP block rules and then you have the conservative rules. But what do you do if you're the governor general in all this, huh? Uh, what rules do you play by? It's putting her in a position like a referee in a game and the players don't agree on the rules. Sure, you could call it so that you know the Maple Leafs always get what they want or the, the Habs get what they want, but the one thing you know in that situation where there's no consensus, you're going to get hammered. Uh, and Matt and John know you're going to get hammered whatever you do. Uh, you're going to have one side of politics saying, you did the wrong thing. And governors general don't want to be on that hook. I don't think we should put them on that hook. Uh, but that's exactly where we put them, on dissolution. Then think of prorogation. I don't have to tell you as much about prorogation. Uh, you, you moved all through it. Uh, and we saw prorogation being used uh, pretty clearly to prevent par parliamentary scrutiny on Afghan detainees. Uh, and we also saw it a year earlier being used to avoid a vote of confidence, which is your very license to govern. Uh, to avoid a vote of confidence in the House of Commons. And I think a lot of Canadians, probably everybody in this room, and myself included, that prorogation shouldn't be used uh, for that purpose. And at the very least, uh, if a prime minister is going to prorogue, he, he, remember, he or she, their license to govern depends on having the support of a majority in the House of Commons. Can't say that too many times. You should at least come before the House of Commons and say, I'm going to parole so I can recalibrate, so I can produce more senders, whatever your bloody reason is. And uh, if you win the vote, fine, uh, uh, I guess. Uh, but uh, uh, what, if, you, if you don't, then, then, then you can't go forward. And that's the essence of uh, the Leighton Amendment passed by a majority in Parliament uh, on St. Patrick's Day this year. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a bell and whistle on that. Uh, the late motion says that, uh, except for if you only want prorogation for a week, anything more for a week, the Prime Minister must come to the House of Commons and get its uh, support for a request uh, uh, to parole. So what we have now, we have uh, a rule about prorogation, uh, supported by some very key players in the parliamentary process. So, Actually, the players who together can then have, have a majority in the House of Commons, the Liberals, uh, the uh, NDP, all supported uh, Mr. Layton's uh, uh, motion. Uh, then we have the Conservatives. Now, I have not been able to get out of Mr. Harper or his PMO or any of his uh, followers in his caucus a statement of what they think the rule is. I'm, I'm, uh, the behavior suggests that they believe a prime minister should get prorogation any time, for any length of time, for any reason. Uh, I haven't seen any qualification. I may have that wrong. I'm open to correction. And there's no need to go to Parliament. But uh, lacking any statement of uh, what Mr. Harper thinks ought to be the rule that governs prime ministerial requests, uh, we simply don't know. Uh, and you may say, well, why, uh, what's been the rule in the past? Well, in the past, it's always been uh, that at least the Prime Minister has to request. It can't be just the Governor General saying, I'm going to parole your damn house. I've had enough of you parliamentarians. I'm closing you down. There has to be a request for the Prime Minister. But in neither New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom or here, have we had a controversy, a real controversy. There was a bit of a, a, a discussion when Mr. Uh, 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 gave way to Mr. Martin, and Martin said, I want to close this session of Parliament so I can introduce a new agenda. I'm just a new leader. Uh, but it wasn't the huge, it, was, it wasn't the controversy we've had on these last two prorogations. And it's out of controversy over the proper use of legal powers. That's how conventions are forged. Uh, you've made a contribution already because I think the latent motion, in my own judgment, captures, uh, I think, the, the view of a majority of Canadians. I, I can't prove that, but uh, I sense that. And I think maybe the Conservatives sense that. I mean, when you lose 10, 11 points of popularity, I mean, that, that's your number one currency. And I don't say that as a cynical political scientist. Uh, leaders of parties have to get have to get popular support. 
And you lose a huge chunk of that. And, and for no other reason that people disapprove uh, of your request for prorogation, uh, a message comes in. So I'm somewhat optimistic that moving ahead, not probably with Mr. Harper, but this may be news to you, I don't think he's going to be Prime Minister forever. Uh, I know there's some who think he will be. Um, he's immortal. But I assure you, he's extremely immortal. And uh, other leaders will come along. And uh, I think they, 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 may, uh, they may be able to support something like the late uh, uh, amendment. Uh, what we should be doing as a country, and I've been working hard on this, this has been the number one uh, job of my, uh, as a con my job as a constitutional activist, is uh, trying to codify some of the key conventions of our, con of our parliamentary system of government. I really believe, uh, and, it's a, and I'm St. Paul on the road, I turned around 180 degrees. I used to be one who said, who had said, oh, you can't call it by, not there in the ether, the atmosphere, the zeitgeist of the time, people just feel them. I think we've been through a period that shows uh, they're not well known, and on some key issues, there's a division of, of uh, uh, and a, and a major division uh, uh, within the political system. And I'm very impressed by what other Westminster systems are doing. Uh, Australia worked for seven years. I had a little bit to do with that. I'm, co I'm, I'm, I'm getting some of its constitutional conventions uh, written down after a governor general at this dismissed a prime minister uh, in 1975 uh, on the basis of constitutional convention. New Zealand, uh, more recently, where is my, 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 here it is. Uh, because it's into a steady period of minority parliaments, has developed a cabinet manual of the key, some of the, many of the key conventions of parliamentary government, what happens after an election, and so on. All designed to take the government general off the hook to give a sort of rules on how parliament is to decide who is to govern and how they, they are to indicate that uh, to, to the governor general. I think they've done a great job, uh, such a good job that the United Kingdom, uh, partly because of this report, uh, have taken the New Zealand report in hand, and as I speak, uh, because they anticipate the, well not anticipate, they think a, a minority parliament is maybe a 50-50 chance in their May election, uh, they are beginning to try and write down uh, many of the key conventions. Now it's quite a trick writing them down. You got they have to, it has to be done, this is just the crucial, this is the tough part, on a consensual basis. You can't put something in there that, uh, there might be a very small party, but something like the Conservatives or the Liberals, or I'd say the NDP, or I'd say the Bloc as well, uh, won't, 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 won't buy into. It has to be done consensually, and it has to be done in this kind of informal way, uh, I think. You could, uh, if you put, these rules into your written constitution. Who interpret, when there's a, a dispute about the written constitution, where do you go? You go to the Supreme Court of Canada. Do you remember Bush versus Gore? Wasn't that wonderful? We've had an election, we're not sure whether you know, the Prime Minister's defeated, he wants another election, but there's another, there's a coalition. Oh, okay, and in four months we're going to have our first hearings before the Supreme Court, uh, and they're going to decide. Uh, you can't put your fundamental rules of the parliamentary system of government into your written constitution unless you want to turn over the regulation of our parliamentary system to nine appointed judges who aren't particularly knowledgeable or prepared for that. And I think that would be a huge mistake. So in doing a little writing down, uh, you have to do it in a kind of informal way that doesn't create a legal document enforceable in the courts. Uh, it's 